And I'm pleased to say that we actually exceeded our goals. So our engineers did a fantastic job and we made great improvements between RDNA 1 and RDNA 2. And with RDNA 3, we actually achieved a 54% gen over gen improvement in performance per watt. Hey guys, Turk here. Hope you're having a good one. You would think when it comes to performance per watt, it'd be a pretty simple calculation. You'd basically would get the performance of a graphics card and divide it by its total power consumption. Well, unfortunately, it's a little bit more nuanced than that. When AMD uses the metric, they're actually talking about percent performance per watt improvement, which is talking about the ratio comparing a new graphics card to an older graphics card, taking the performance divided by the power consumption. In the past, AMD has figured this in with all of the games that they've benchmarked in their labs, along with all of the different resolutions that they've tested. But as we saw in their latest presentations, it looks like they're starting to change their tune just a little bit. Now, I've covered performance per watt a whole bunch of times here on the channel, and if you're interested in seeing how I came to a lot of the conclusions I'm going to talk about in today's video, check out the link it down in the description. We've talked about all of the performance per watt claims that AMD has had from Vega all the way to RDNA 2. We go deep into the different metrics, the different resolutions, and the games. I highly recommend y'all check out that video to get up to speed. But today, we're not going to be looking at the entire product stack, we're going to be focusing in on the higher end. Based on my calculations from AMD's own white papers, I was able to conclude that AMD's 300 watt RDNA 3 graphics card will perform very well when it comes to 4K resolutions, but it is going to lose quite a bit of steam when it comes to 1440p and full HD. And now that we've got the updated TGPs for both of these new graphics cards, I went ahead and re-updated my model and sure enough, the 50% performance per watt predictions we were originally given apply to the 7900 XTX that comes in at 355 watts. So how exactly am I able to conclude that my predictions have been in fact confirmed through AMD's presentation? Well, why don't we dive in just a bit deeper? At the top of the event, AMD CEO Lisa Su came out and made the claim that through their development, they were able to actually get the 7900 XTX going up to 54% performance per watt improvement. Now, this is comparing against the 6950 XT, which is a bit different than some of the base calculations that I've done, but after running through the numbers and looking through their charts, I think we're still in the same ballpark. Now, I do want to mention one thing about this claim. As I was digging through the press charts for this press event, I noticed that the little EndNote sticker that they've got down at the bottom right, it looks like AMD's marketing team has actually removed all of the references for that particular claim, and I find that pretty suspicious. But fortunately, I've been collecting a lot of data and been doing the calculations, and it does look like the 54% performance per watt improvement lines up exactly with what we should be expecting. Beyond the generic 54% performance improvement, they also gave us three games with raw rasterization performance metrics. In Cyberpunk 2077, AMD is expecting a 1.7x improvement in frame rates at the 4K resolution. And with Watch Dogs Legion and Modern Warfare 2, they're expecting to see a 1.5x performance improvement. But guys, hold on just a second. The numbers that they're giving us are raw performance numbers. They are not, in fact, performance per watt. So don't be misled by the marketing team's mischievous data manipulations. So what happens when we take these performance uplift numbers, apply them to real performance metrics, and see how it compares to Lisa Su's claims? Well, let's take a look. Let's start off with Watch Dogs Legion. If we take the 1.5x performance improvement, the 7900 XTX is expected to land at 132 FPS at 4K in very high details. Though the number is impressive, it is just shy of the RTX 4090 by 6 percentage points. Now, translating that into performance per watt, that's only a 42% improvement compared to the 6950 XT. So this game is about 12 percentage points off of AMD's 54% claims. Moving on to Cyberpunk 2077, AMD claims to hit a 1.7x performance improvement, and AMD's flagship is now neck and neck with the RTX 4090. The performance per watt improvement actually comes in really good, coming in at 60%, or 6 percentage points above Lisa Su's claims. 
Now, both of these games are coming from Hardware Unboxed's latest RTX 4090 review that is using the 5800X3D, which is still fast in its own right, but there could be some contention on the CPU that the performance could be a little bit better. Now let's move over to Modern Warfare 2, and this is coming from Hardware Unboxed's benchmark where they tested, I think, 40 different GPUs on Modern Warfare 2, and they're using the 13th Gen 13900K from Intel. So these numbers are going to be as close as it's going to get to actual benchmarks come December 13th. At ultra detail settings and 4K with an expected 1.5x uplift, the 7900 XTX is again right on target with the RTX 4090, missing by only 5 FPS. But as impressive as that performance is, performance per watt misses the mark by 12 percentage points, just like we saw with Watch Dogs Legion. Given that the performance we see in these three games kind of straddles that 54% improvement, what happens when we take AMD's word and apply that to Hardware Unboxed's 13 game average at 4K? Compared to the 6950XT, the 7900XTX on average should see a 64% imp performance improvement. Even then though, the 7900XTX slips behind the Nvidia flagship by 4%. So unfortunately, from a flagship perspective, it does look like that NVIDIA is going to maintain the helm, at least with these current projections, but I gotta say, it's still a really strong showing from RDNA 3 with AMD's latest GPUs. So what should we expect from GPU reviews going into the December 13th launch? At 4K, I suspect both the 7900 XTX and the XT version to come very close to the 50% performance per watt improvement. As optimistic as the Cyberpunk results are, I really don't expect most games to land above that target. With AMD sort of redefining how they calculate performance per watt, I'm a little less optimistic about how 1080p and 1440p resolutions are going to perform. As we saw with the RTX 4090 review from Hardware Unboxed, even the RTX 4090 seems to underperform in some games at 1440p. And given how AMD's cards have tracked with performance per watt at lower resolutions, I don't expect RDNA 3 cards to perform any better. But the star of the show has got to be the price for these graphics cards. The 7900 XT is coming in at $900 and the 7900 XTX is coming in at $1000. I went ahead and compiled some of the latest sale prices for these high-end graphics cards that we've shown in this charts today, and I went ahead and calculated a preliminary dollars per frame at 4K resolutions. Clearly, the Nvidia cards are extremely overpriced when it comes from dollars per frame. Obviously, the RTX 3090 Ti is way overpriced, mainly due to its positioning during the GPU shortage of 2020 and 2021. But looking at that RTX 4090, it does start to gain a little bit of value comparatively, but is still really expensive. Unfortunately, the RTX 3080 is coming in right at about $10 per frame, which I don't think is gonna bode well for the future RTX 4080. Looking at these Radeon cards, I think AMD is posed to take some market dominance. The 6950 XT can be found for about seven to $800 right now, and the 6900 XT comes in even cheaper. But guys, what I find extremely phenomenal is that with the current performance numbers that we're expecting, the 7900 XTX at 4K resolutions is going to be a value champion. Even if the performance doesn't line up with what Lisa Sue showed us with that 54% performance per watt, man, there's still a lot of buffer built in, especially for some of the lower tiered SKUs that are going to be coming in 2023. And the last thing to keep our eyes on in these early reviews is going to be ray tracing performance. Now, it's pretty obvious that NVIDIA is going to take the cake here, but I've got to say that I'm thoroughly impressed with just the iterative performance improvements that AMD has been able to bake into RDNA 3. They claim to get more than 50% per CU in performance when it comes to ray tracing, and judging by the raw rasterization performance we see in this video, I think it's finally a good opportunity for enthusiasts to turn on ray tracing when using their AMD GPUs. But as we go into 2023 with the remainder of the cards to be announced and launched, I'm a little less optimistic with how these lower tier GPUs are going to perform. Historically, AMD's GPUs don't necessarily scale all that well with performance per watt as they go into these smaller die sizes.
In Cyberpunk 2077, we do expect to see a 60% performance per watt with the higher tiered cards, but historically, we see performance per watt drop significantly going down the product stack. With Watch Dogs Legion, the performance is a bit tighter overall, but when we convert that to performance per watt, it's not perfect when going to the lower wattage cards. And if we take this all into account with the 12 game average, there could be anywhere between a 4 to 19 percentage point spread going down the entire product stack, and that translates into less performance at even lower wattage levels. However, that is some speculation and we need to see some updated figures from AMD in order to come to some better conclusions. But overall, I've been very impressed with what AMD has shown us to this point, and I've got to say RDNA 3 is going to be right on line with what I've been expecting ever since my July video when I came up with these predictions. But guys, that's all I want to talk about when it comes to RDNA 3 performance per watt. If you guys think I missed anything or if I'm a little off the mark, let me know down in the comments and hopefully I'll be able to snag one of these GPUs when it comes launch time, December 13th. But thank you guys for sticking to the end of the video. I hope you'll have a good one. We'll catch you in the next one.